everyone, this is Dr. Lennon, and we're going to be talking about Taylor series. And essentially, when you combine Taylor, the Taylor polynomial method with power series, that gives you the Taylor series. So it's, it's really nothing too uh, difficult. Uh, you just find the general pattern, and you can talk about radius of convergence and interval of convergence the same way. So let's just go through writing down uh, a few of these, but really we're not going to do too much besides that. Um, so um, example... Let's go through uh, the main ones again. Uh, so find the Taylor series. Uh, for each function. So a, let's say we have f of x equals the sine of x. So this is the first one we talked about. Uh, in the Taylor polynomials. So remember the, the technique is just to uh, find the <clears throat> look at the function and then look at each of the derivatives until you notice a pattern. And with sine of x it's pretty straightforward because uh, it repeats eventually after four derivatives. So we have start with the sine of x then we get the cosine of x then we get uh, negative sine of x, then we get negative cosine of x, and then we just get the sine of x taking the derivatives, and this continues again forever. So um, the coefficients are found by plugging in zero. So technically, uh, I, I, so you need to specify a center. So we'll look at some examples after this where the center is different, but here we're just gonna use the center a equals zero for the first few. So we end up with um, we end up with uh, a sine of zero zero, cosine of zero is one. The negative sine is also going to be zero, and then uh, the third derivative comes out to negative one, and then we're back to where we started. So what, what is our Taylor polynomial here? Well, our Taylor polynomial, we can basically say the sine of x is just, um, uh, we start off with x, then minus x cubed over, um, uh, three factorial, and then plus x to the fifth over five factorial, and so on. And then if you write down the general term like we did before, that's what allows you to write down the Taylor series in the series expansion form. So remember how we did that. Uh, this, oh, sorry, I'm gonna write the general term first, then we're gonna go ahead and write the series below. So um, what is the general term, the nth term? Remember the way to figure that out is think about each index. So think about this as being the zero, one, two, and so on. So this is gonna be, um, well, we know we need a negative one in parentheses to some power. Then we need an x. Then we need a factorial on the bottom. So we have a negative one, um, an x, and then a factorial on the bottom. So uh, this is just going to be to the uh, n if we're starting at zero. And then this will be 2n plus 1. And then it will also be 2n plus 1 factorial. So that's how we can write down the series expansion of this. So this is the series from n equals 0 to infinity of uh, negative 1 to the n times x to the n over n plus 1 factorial. And notice if you plug in indices starting at 0 and continuing, you get all the terms. So um, in the previous one on Taylor polynomials, I asked you to try it for cosine. Um, it's not so different. So if we have the cosine of x, the derivatives are gonna be the same, just in a slightly different order, right? They're gonna be rotated. So uh, if we have g of x as the cosine, then g prime in this case is going to be minus sine of x. Then the second derivative here will be minus cosine of x. Then the third derivative will be uh, the sine of x and then on our fourth derivative, we will have gone through back to where we started at the cosine of x.
And then we want to figure out all those coefficients. So g of 0 this time is going to be 1. Then we have, uh, again, I should be saying at a equals 0. g of 0 is going to be 0. Then we end up, sorry, g prime. Then the second derivative at 0 is minus 1. And then we continue plugging it into sine. We get 0 again. And then we're back to where we started. So the fourth derivative at 0 is equal to 1. So now we're getting all the even powers. And this might not surprise you because if you go back to your original study of functions from pre-calculus, we know that based on graph symmetry, uh, sine is an odd function. And su uh, not surprisingly, for the Taylor expansion, all the powers of x are odd. And when we look at cosine, all the powers of x are now going to be even. So uh, what do we get? We get um, our cosine of x is given by the uh, expansion. Well, we're going to get 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial. Uh, and uh, sorry, they alternate, so I should have had a minus there. So 1 minus, the second coefficient is negative 1, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial and then we continue and we want to get that general term which helps us write down the series expansion so we know um, basically if we look at uh, each of these things we're going to be writing down the term as well we need some negative one um, and again we can just do that to the um, nth and then x is always going to be raised to the 2n and this is over 2n factorial. So if this continues, that gives our general term if we go from 0 to infinity. So that is our uh, Taylor series there. So from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n over 2n factorial. So that is our Taylor series there. Um, what if we want to... Uh, and, and then again, I'll, I'll write down a couple others. So these are for you to check. Um, so let's say we have h of x equals e to the x. Again, check that e to the x is just the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. That's a pretty easy one. And then... Um, another one which we did in the power series section that comes up quite a bit is, uh, you know, let's say f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x. This is just, um, again, check that what we have here is 1 over 1 minus x is just the sum of all the powers of x. So the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. All right, let's do one where we have a center other than zero, and that'll basically be it. So that's how you find all these Taylor series. You just go through the Taylor polynomial construction um, and then look for the general pattern. And then you can use all the analysis from power series on these as well. So example, find the Taylor series for f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x. But let's change, oh, again, all those centers here are at a equals 0 and above also at a equals 0. So what we want to do is we want to do one where maybe the center's not 0. Um, so let's say at a equals 5. So, um, Okay, so what are we going to do here? So let's go ahead and start off. Again, uh, we want to care about what the coefficients are. So the coefficients, remember, are given by um, looking at all the derivatives 
and then plugging in those values into the derivatives with respect to the factorials. So, um, so as usual, let's look for the pattern of the derivatives. So we have 1 over 1 minus x for the original function, then the derivative, the first derivative. Well, we've got a negative 1 from the power, but that actually cancels with a negative 1 from the product rule. So this is just going to be um, 1 minus x to the negative 2. And then the second derivative is we're going to have a negative 2, the negative coming out. So we're going to get 2 times 1 minus x to the negative 3. And so those two negatives are always going to be canceling, essentially. So uh, we can kind of see the pattern becoming readily apparent. So the third derivative is going to be um, 2 times 3. So that's actually 3 factorial times 1 minus x to the negative 4. And pretty much we can see the general pattern. The nth derivative of x would be um, n factorial times 1 minus x. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to the negative n plus 1, or if we write it in fraction form, n factorial over um, 1 minus x to the n plus 1 in the denominator. So uh, normally what you would do is you would plug in 0 when the center was at 0, but now the center is 5. So to find our coefficients, we're plugging in 5. So f of 5 is just going to be 1 over 1 minus 5, which is minus 1 fourth. If we look at the um, second one, what's happening, uh, f prime of 5, that's going to be, um, well, we've got 1 minus 5, negative 4, then we're squaring it, so we're getting um, 1 over 16. And then for the third one, f double prime of 5, plugging 5 in for x, we're getting still 4, but now to the third power, and uh, the odd ones are going to be negative. So it might be easier just to write this as 1 over 4 squared, and then minus 1 over 4 cubed. And that's the pattern that we found. So the uh, third derivative here at 5 is going to give 1 over 4 to the uh, fourth power. So um, that basically gives us our general coefficients. So our, our nth coefficient, in fact, if we would call it cn, uh, this would be um, uh, our cnth coefficient should be uh, so negative one to whatever the so the negative one it looks like if our first one is zero we want to add one to it so negative one to the n plus one and then we're multiplying by one over four. And that is what power. So if we wanted to make this first term index 0, um, it's 1 over 4 to the n plus 1. So those are our coefficients. And that gives us the uh, Taylor series. So our Taylor series here at this different center. Um, so uh, the Taylor series. For f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x centered at a equals 5 is, um, uh, let's write this down so we could say f of x is equal to the um, summation from n equals 0 to infinity. Uh, we have our coefficient, uh, negative 1 n plus 1 divided by 4 to the n plus 1, and then we just take our center uh, and subtract that from x, x minus 5 raised to the nth. And that gives us exactly our Taylor series. So that's how we find the Taylor series and adjust it. Basically, you're still using the same derivative pattern. You're just plugging in that number for your coefficients and um, figuring out the pattern for those as well. So uh, this is Dr. Lennon uh, signing off.